This presentation is an analysis of chapters 17 to 24 and the final letters of Mary Shelley's novel Frankenstein. Summary of chapters 17 to 24 and the final letters of Mary Shelley's novel Frankenstein. This part of the novel begins with Frankenstein and his creation concluding their long conversation about what the creature has spent his existence doing, and he ends with a threat to Frankenstein that if Frankenstein does not create a mate for him, he will destroy his life. At first, Frankenstein refuses, but ultimately agrees to do so, and the monster agrees to move to South America with his new mate and leave the continent of Europe if Frankenstein creates a mate for him. Frankenstein returns to his family in Geneva and sinks back into a deep depression, and the family is alarmed by his haggard appearance. In Geneva, he resumes his scientific studies to find out the latest developments as he plans to recreate another creature to accompany his original monster. He promises his father he will marry Elizabeth after he returns on a trip across Europe, a trip he takes to cover his work on his second creation. His best friend, Henry Clerval, joins his travels first to France, then Germany, then Holland, and then, then London. He is so distraught about the prospect of creating another creature that even the power of nature cannot bring him peace. In London, Clerval cheerfully sightsees while Frankenstein unhappily spends his time visiting scientists and learning how to create his second creature. Frankenstein suggests they part ways, and he goes to a small isolated island, one of the Orkney Islands, which are part of Scotland, and continues his work on a mate for his creature. Frankenstein is emotionally distraught and fearful for the safety of his family as he works on the desolate island. One day, the monster shows up at his lab, and Frankenstein becomes furious, and given the second doubts he has been feeling about creating another monster, he destroys his work and vows never to create another creature. The monster leaves, warning him that he will see him at his wedding. Frankenstein now has to dispose of the body parts he has been using to create the second creature, and once he finishes throwing them out to sea, he is caught in a violent storm, and he washes ashore, and when he washes ashore, he is arrested for murder. His creature has strangled his best friend, Henry Clerval, and Frankenstein is accused of being his murderer. Eventually, Frankenstein is acquitted for the murder, but not before spending two months in jail, wasting away from grief to the point of almost death. After his release, his father takes his son and his to he, he takes his son, who is at death's door to, due to grief, and they travel to France. He recovers slightly with the help of his father and tries to confess his responsibility in the deaths of William, Justine, and Henry Clerval. But his father dismisses his confession as the ramblings of a sick man. He finally is well enough to marry Elizabeth, but is frightened about the promise the creature has made about being at his wedding. As promised, the monster shows up on Frankenstein's wedding night and strangles his new bride, Elizabeth. Victor confesses his creation of the monster, but it is too late to do any good. A few days after hearing of the death of Elizabeth, Victor's father dies of a broken heart, and Victor vows revenge on the monster. He proceeds to chase the monster down first from Geneva to the Mediterranean Sea, where both board a ship bound for the Black Sea, where he chases the monster through Russia, and then ultimately they end up in the Arctic Circle, where Frankenstein's story began. The story has been a flashback up to this point, and it ends by returning to the frame in which it began, with Robert Walton telling the rest of the tale in the final letters. He tells how Frankenstein wants to remain in the Arctic, hunting down the monster as he grows weaker and weaker. Walton humor, Walter humors him. Walton humors him to the point of near mutiny aboard his ship when the crew wants to leave the desolate Arctic. Eventually he dies and the monster ends up on board and is confronted by Walton over Frankenstein's deathbed. He promises to leave without harming the crew and live out his life in the Arctic. Important themes. The important themes of the novel continue through the end. First is the importance of nature, which reflects the mood and psychological state of Frankenstein and the monster. Frankenstein has allowed himself to veer so far from natural law that he can no longer feel restored by nature in his European trip. 
The storms and violent Arctic weather parallel both Frankenstein's and the monster's emotions. The theme of alienation and the importance of family and friends is further developed as Frankenstein's monster takes each of Frankenstein's loved ones away from him. Frankenstein refuses to create a loved one for the monster, and the scientific goal of creating a second creation alienates Frankenstein from his family and friends. The theme of the corruption of society is further developed as the monster continues to be rejected and abused by society simply because he is grotesque and in appearance. And Frankenstein suffers to the point of near death in prison for a crime he not only did not commit, but also suffers from, from personally as it is his, his friend who has been murdered. Additionally, this part of the novel illustrates the danger of a quest for knowledge and use of science to violate natural law, as Frankenstein's monster wreaks havoc on his creator and those who are close to him as well as suffers personally since Frankenstein and society reject him. Doubling the romantic characteristic of doubling continues in the last part of the novel, where Frankenstein and the monster share emotions and suffer together. The monster torments his creator for abandoning him by killing his best friend and wife, which result in the death of Frankenstein's father. They are linked at the end of the novel as Frankenstein remains committed to chasing down to seek revenge on the monster. At the end of the novel, both are alienated from family, lovers, and friends, and both live a miserable existence of mere survival in the Arctic. Notice that they are together in death as Frankenstein dies of exhaustion and grief. It is almost as if the two are one person. Gothic Romantic Elements The novel uses important romantic characteristics such as the glorification of nature, idealistic portrayal of pastoral country life through the de Lacy family, the depiction of society as corrupt in the impact of society on the monster and Frankenstein's scientific experiments on his own life as well as on those who are close to him, the supernatural elements in creating the monster from dead body parts, and the psychological connection between the monster and his creation, the use of doubling, the emphasis of emotion over reason as the feelings of the monster and Frankenstein are explored in depth and have more influence on their behavior than reason, and the use of far-off and exotic settings as this novel takes place all over Europe and in the Arctic. That gothic Gothicism is a subgenre of romanticism and emphasizes the use of mystery and supernatural and the supernatural and gloomy far and far away places. Clearly, this novel includes both gothic and romantic elements. Frames. There are three plot lines in this novel which are known as three frames by which the story is told. The main storyline is that of Frankenstein's, which is told within the frame of Robert Walton's letters, which give Frankenstein's story credibility and make it seem more realistic. The final theme is that of the monster story, which is told by Walton based on what Frankenstein has told him. Giving the monster a voice makes him more sympathetic to the reader as, as we can see his feelings and emotions and how he feels abandoned by his creator and rejected by society through no fault of his own until he becomes embittered and dangerous. Autobiographical Elements Mary Shelley uses her experiences traveling Europe in this part of the novel, as well as making allusions to some of the significant romantic literature of her day, such as Wordsworth's Tintern Abbey. Some critics have also said the monster could be autobiographical in the sense um, that because she was abandoned by her own mother, who died in childbirth, resulting in Mary Shelley being raised by a less-than-supportive stepmother and relatives she was sent off to live with as she grew up. She may also feel monster-like or alienated in her relationship with Percy by Shelley, in that he was married to another woman when he began having children with Mary.